Welcome to Watch and Wonder through Paul Taggart's Elfin Chronicles and this bonus feature, for which I reveal some insights into my masterwork oil painting, Webstrand's Gathering Swarm, which appears in Chapter 3 of our video storybook, Webstrand the Tooth Gatherer. Watch how the painting goes through many stages, from the first drawing out to the final finishing touches. See how it appears on the pages of my originally written and illustrated book, especially designed by Sunita Gahia for Webstrand the Tooth Gatherer. Listen to some of the story taken from the video storybook. Catch one of the commissioned pieces of original music, especially composed by Lisa Mulholland to depict Webstrand's gathering swarm. For Fizz, it was like being caught within the mirrors of a kaleidoscope. Colours swirled all around her, turning the whole world into a dazzle. Dizzying hues began to marshal themselves into patterns. These coalesced even further, becoming rank upon rank of flying elfin. Multicoloured wings became iridescent as they passed through the moonbeams falling through her bedroom window. Washed with light from the stars, this whirlwind spun clockwise all around her. Every now and then, within the confusion, she managed to focus for only a moment on a tiny, grinning face. For a second time, Fizz heard the buzz of their strange language. They were chattering to one another, and they all sounded so happy. For what seemed an age to her, but was probably only moments, the swirling continued. Then, without warning or any audible command, they all dropped simultaneously from the air. Throughout the five years to this point, which it has taken me to create this collection of paintings, I've been able to put all my other fine artwork to one side. These paintings are quite different. Usually I'm working from something in front of me, something which I can see. But these images were purely in my mind. Sometimes they were quite strong, sometimes just glimpses of an idea. These had to be coalesced, and the only way to do that was to just start putting marks down on a piece of paper. So a whole series of drawings began. Here are just a smattering of those drawings for one painting. Thinking, in this case, of a swarm of elfin, and they're entering a bedroom at night. And I wanted them to swirl around in a spiral descending from the corner of a room. I had to think about their light, the light that they created. I had to think of the moonlight which was coming through the window and how that would illuminate them and how the rest of the room might be illuminated. What was in the room? What could be in the room? So that's where the drawings came to help me focus my mind on what the paintings could be. And then the paintings themselves began. When I started the painting, again, although I'd gone through all the drawings, they were not something that was, was actually there that I, could, that I could see. And so I had to start with a structure. I had to start with the idea of where the elfin would be placed, the composition in other words. I had no idea whether I could make the light around them work, whether I could make them fly, whether I could make them stand out from the background. And so the paintings were built up very, very gradually. They evolved, really. As they evolved, not only did the image evolve, but the story would change in my mind. So the story and the visuals went hand in hand, and the story changed, as did the paintings. So the whole process was an evolution. It was an evolution in terms of the composition of the paintings. It was an evolution in terms of the structure and the light and the story itself changed day by day. 
I got so excited by the ideas as I worked on them that often I would scribble ideas on the back of the painting itself. I would think of names of the creatures that were there and exactly what was happening to them. So I started really in a way to inhabit the space of the paintings. I went inside the paintings themselves and the elfin world became my world. Welcome to my studio in the Highlands of Scotland. From where we bring you Paul Taggart's Elfin Chronicles. As a young child, I was a very solitary individual. I loved to play on my own, especially in my grandmother's garden. Part of the garden was cultivated, but the most of it was wild. And I loved walking through the long grasses and weeds and flowers that grew there. I remember those summer days chasing butterflies and searching for insects and frogs under stones and logs. At the bottom of this garden, the very bottom of the garden, there was a small rise. And once I was beyond this small rise, I was hidden from my grandmother back in the house. Just at the bottom of the rise was a small area of different grasses. The large grasses diminished and here was a swathe of fine green grass and it grew in a perfect circle. And I remember one day with the sun on my eyelids as I sat on that rise looking down on that grassy area and just closing my eyes for a moment and reopening them, there was a movement and I recognized it as a blue butterfly. Now, I know there are blue butterflies everywhere, but there weren't any in my grandmother's garden. I knew that because I'd chased many a butterfly. There were cabbage whites, there were tortoise shells, red admirals, but I'd never seen a blue one there. So I was fascinated by it, but as I tried to focus my eyes on it, it disappeared. So I closed my eyes again and opened them just slightly and the blue butterfly came back. And I thought this was incredibly strange. So I kept my eyes half closed, pretending I was asleep. And I watched this butterfly flutter around and it was soon joined by another, and then another. And they began to fly in a circle, a clockwise circle around this green swathe of grass. Now, you may say, well, you're probably asleep. I had, after all, closed my eyes. But this was not the only occasion it happened. After that time, I, I went down to that spot again and again throughout the summer and the blue butterflies came back. And soon I became absolutely entranced by their magic. As an adult, I always wanted to capture the essence of this magic, which is how in the mid nineties, I found myself bringing to life the mysterious creatures that are the elfin. During the light of day, I would take up my brush and watercolour paints to work on a set of 18 unique illustrations that were enchanting me. As I painted, the story of elfin began to develop in my mind. I became so engrossed that all other paintings and books were forsaken in order to free my imagination and allow me to concentrate on completing my first book in the Elfin Chronicles, in which I recount a particular legend involving the Elfin swarm leader, Lacewing, and an itinerant artist by the name of Artemis Glynn. However, it had always been my hope to set aside enough time to work on a collection of oil paintings with which to depict another significant event in Elfin history. We invite you to join me 
as I share with you my latest illustrated book from Paul Taggart's Elfin Chronicles. Webstrand, the Tooth Gatherer. Fast forward a few years later, and once more, the lure of the Elfin was too great to resist. I began work on another unique collection of masterworks oil paintings. Twenty in all. Which were to take me well over five years to create. As before, the elfin folklore of Webstrand the Tooth Gatherer took over my life as I worked on these all-important masterworks. The composition for each elfin portrait and scene-setting painting was originally based on my first draft of the narrative. Soon, however, I found myself changing the interpretation of the story within these paintings, as the world of Webstrand the Tooth Gatherer took hold. Ultimately, the developing paintings had an ever-changing influence on the story. Until both my paintings and story reached a natural conclusion. But this was merely the completion of the first stage. We were now about to embark on the next exciting phase, for the book had to be designed. We had a million ideas to explore. Why not some dedicated elfin music? At the very least, the elfin song, which comes into the story. Our wish list was growing as we added special items. The studio was filling with examples of uniquely produced work by talented craftspeople. What if we filmed the work in progress to share online so that people could peek behind the scenes at the various creative processes? So, where are we now? Well, first off, the final and unique design for my lavishly illustrated book, Webstrand the Tooth Gatherer, has been completed by Sunita Gehia, our design director. For which I produced a further 116 vignette oil paintings. Quite different to my masterworks, these vignettes, scattered throughout the book, portray even more insight into the elfin folklore of Webstrand the Tooth Gatherer. And how about something else which is a little bit different, something unique to us? A new concept, something that reflects the work we've been doing online for many years. An illustrated audio book, maybe. What about something more than that? Welcome to our artist's first edition video storybook. All nine chapters available now on Vimeo. We refer to this as the artist's first edition, because the entire video storybook was created 
filmed and produced by us in our own studio here in the Highlands of Scotland. This unique concept of our video storybook was inspired by the artistic interpretations of my original story and paintings by our fellow collaborators. Both Sunita in her captivating book design and our music director Lisa Mulholland in her exclusive compositions reflect the mood of the story as it unfolds from light beginnings through more challenging times until ultimately reaching an enigmatic finale of hope and future possibilities. We invite you to listen along with me as I personally read my unabridged original story accompanied not only by Lisa's evocative music which wends its way through the entire nine chapters but also by my 20 masterworks and the 116 vignettes which are brought to life as I read from the pages of this video storybook. In the telling of the wondrous journey and epic tale that is the elfin folklore, Webstrand the Tooth Gatherer. If, like Fizz, you also come to believe in Elfin and search carefully along a star's path, you may find what appears to be a small glowing ember in the undergrowth. But be on your guard, for once you start the search, it can soon become a quest. We all live in a world of scepticism, disbelief and doubt. But imagine, if you will, one filled with mystery and magic. Here, wishes can actually come true in a way you would hardly believe. Let me share with you the chronicle of an earthling who goes by the nickname Fizz, whose creative imagination and zest for life leads her on a remarkable journey. A journey which was to change her life forever, on which her guide was none other than Webstrand the Tooth Gatherer. Watch as I depict the story of Webstrand the Tooth Gatherer. Through my scene setting, original Masterworks oil paintings. And the many storytelling illustrations that capture this epic tale. And listen, as this chronicle of a wondrous journey is told. Well spotted, Fizz, Webstrand congratulated. Yes, it is an eye gem, but the flash doesn't develop until it's linked to its own special wearer. Owning an eye ring isn't just like wearing a piece of jewellery. It becomes the wearer's companion and can't be used by anyone else. And listen to the original musical soundtrack and soundscape that undulates through the good times and bad, the joy and horrors, the magical and real, the very essence of Webstrand the Tooth Gatherer. Next time you look up 
into the royal blue of an evening sky and spy a falling star, think of the elfin. Somewhere, not so far away, they are gathering their numbers to follow that star until it reaches Earth, where, hidden in the undergrowth, they will find their treasure, an elfin egg that has traversed the star fields to reach its destination. You may well see them on their journey home, carrying their egg between them. Tiny specks against the night sky, only visible when they cross a bright star or the face of a full moon. <laughs>